Are you a Catholic mom in business who often feels lonely? Maybe you're more interested in business than any of your other friends and they kind of don't understand your love of making money and taking courses and signing up for free challenges online. Or maybe you find your more corporately minded friends, the ones who go to work nine to five and have you know, sort of a stable job and have different challenges that come with that, can't relate to your love of risk or your love of adventure or your love of trying new things or some of the challenges that come with working from home. Or maybe entrepreneurship right now is an idea in your heart and you know you can do it, but you're like, Oh my word, everyone around me is telling me I should just be staying home. <laughs> Today on the Possibility Mom Live, we're bringing on my business village, so to speak. You know how it takes a village to raise a child? What if it takes a village to build a successful business? Today on the Possibility Mom Live, you're going to hear from my business village, Stephanie Donahue, on the power of a mastermind. Stephanie Donahue, welcome to the Possibility Mom Live. How are you doing today? Hi, thank you for having me here. It's great to be here. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you. And you have been a guest on the podcast before, so some people will be very familiar with who you are, but for anyone who is not familiar, can you just share with us a little bit about you and how you got here? Mm, okay. So my name is Stephanie Donahue and I live in Washington state in the United States. I have a family, um, a wonderful husband and three children. And I was a nurse for 10 years and then I got more into uh, preventative health. And so I left my nursing career that's a long story, but uh, I ended up starting a health blog and uh, and then that brought me into the world of online business. And so from there, I ended up joining uh, different programs and courses and found that I actually had a greater love for supporting people to grow their business and implement those programs. And so that is what, in a nutshell, brought me to this point right here. You know, we joke all the time, like, I, I often say like I have a master's degree level in online business because I've taken all the courses, all the things. Stephanie Donahue has like a PhD in online business. Like if they were to name a building in a university after Stephanie, it would be like the library, like the library of how to run an online business because Stephanie has so much knowledge in her head. <laughs> that can help an online entrepreneur. Okay. Can you please brag about yourself? I know you find this not so fun. I find it so interesting, but can you brag about yourself for just like 60 seconds and share with us some of the certifications and trainings that you have under your belt? Mm, okay. So I'm, I'm multi-passionate about all things online business. So I love every piece of it from the from the operations to the delivery to the marketing to the finance to the to the everything. So what I did is I became um, certified in in these key areas so that I can support that business owner. So I started as an online business manager, which is uh, very broad, and then I kind of uh, niched down to more into the operational side and got certified as a director of operations. And then I wanted to get more into the marketing side, so I became a certified marketer. Uh, and that great brought me into creating uh, campaigns. And then I wanted to help uh, better launch those campaigns so I became certified as a launch manager. And then I wanted to help the business owner with their personal growth, realizing that that was very, very key to their business success. So I became a certified high performance coach. So that's like, I don't know if anybody was keeping count, I should have had one of those like bells, like ding, 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 ding. I think you have six. You have six different certifications. Yeah, I have a lot more than that. I didn't name everyone. Those are just the key ones that. <laughs> so 
So when I learned this about Stephanie, and I learned this about Stephanie because she signed up for one of my programs. She she had, you know, we, we've done a whole other podcast. I'll, I'll encourage you to go listen to that one uh, where we talked about her journey around coming, um, understanding the aspect of the Catholic economy and your passion for building a Catholic economy. So we kind of came, our world collided at that sort of juncture in your life. And it was such an interesting experience because you signed up for my mastermind. And it was a very interesting experience because as I was coaching you, Stephanie, I, of course, couldn't not see because, like, I ask very probing questions. I, you know, take my clients through a series of activities that really, quote unquote, forces them to be vulnerable and to get clear. I couldn't not see how aligned we were. And actually how complementary our strengths are. And that's when we started talking about, well, what would it look like for this to no longer be a coach and coachee relationship? What would it look like for us to team up and join forces and host the mastermind together? So that is what we did back in, oh my gosh, Stephanie, help me out here. When did we start this? January? Last uh, April. Last April. Last April. So April two thousand. 22, we launched the first iteration of the new version of the Wealth Without Guilt Mastermind, and it has been so much fun. Before we get into the content of today's episode, Stephanie, how do you feel your life has changed since embracing this new, I'm going to call it new, new for you? like new role, particularly in my company, but also in helping other specifically Catholic women build their businesses. So how would you say your life has changed in the last approximately six-ish months? Mm, well, I can say it's a dream come true. Really, it is because I, from the very beginning, like very early on, when I was supporting people in the back end of their businesses, I really felt a strong calling to be a coach in, in a consultant capacity. And uh, that's the thing is I just didn't know how to hop the fence to get over. And then I, at the same time, I felt a very strong calling to help Catholics like, to grow um, the Catholic economy. I didn't have the name for it at the time, but that's really what I felt. And so, what Lisa did by bringing me on into the mastermind is she really uh, helped me to embrace all of these things that I've felt called to for many years all at once. And it's, it's been just, I don't know, I can't put it into words. It's just truly a gift. And I thank God for it. And I think Lisa too. Well, you like you, yeah, gift is understatement because you have really, I've, you know, I've said this before coming into my own business, you have transformed my business, but you're also helping to transform the businesses of the women in our mastermind. We had Virginia Braun on the podcast last week and she spoke about our complimentary gifts. Um, you know, we both love spreadsheets, but you really love spreadsheets and, and just the different angles that we come at business, our different personalities. I'm more sanguine. You are more melancholic. And it's just, it's been such a thrill and such a joy to host this mastermind with you. I hope we do it forever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> but today I want to talk about with you because you and I have both been involved in our own masterminds. Like personally, we have benefited from masterminds and now we are obviously running one together. And so today's episode is about the power of strength in numbers. And like I said, when I opened the podcast, there's this very wildly sort of popular expression, takes a village to raise a child. I would argue just as much as it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a village to support a Catholic mom entrepreneur. And there are so many reasons why that's true. But today I wanna to get into the reasons why a mastermind can help on a very practical level, a Catholic mom entrepreneur succeed. So we're gonna get through as many as we can today. We probably could talk about this for like two hours long. But we're going to get through a couple things today. I hope this is the kind of podcast that if you are thinking about joining a mastermind, you are 
convicted to make that decision with confidence. There, there I mean, I could, we, we will jump into this, but just on a very personal note, we cannot, we're not designed to do life alone. And I, and I think there are many parts of today's culture that would confuse somebody otherwise, like, like sort of this sort of messaging around, you got this, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But I just think that there is a tendency in today's modern culture. I say this all the time. If you even look at the way we live today, like these very concrete boxes in the sky, I talk about this all the time. Like even the way we live somewhat facilitates independence, you know? Um, and I just, I will say this all the time, human beings are meant to be in community. And so just on a very personal level, I really believe that wholeheartedly. But Stephanie, if somebody is debating joining a mastermind, or they're even just like entertaining, well, what is a mastermind? Like, why would I want this? What's one of the th first things they should think about? The first thing they should think about is, uh, does this mastermind align with my values and my goals for my business? And why is that important? Well, <laughs> so I make it a point to always be in a mastermind. I, that's how passionate I feel about masterminds is I'm either in one or two of them um, at a time. And the reason why it's so important is because when you're in a mastermind, we'll get more into this, but you can you can really see other perspectives in your business, and that is actually a really big value. But if they're not in alignment with your values, you're going to toss out what they're going to have to say because you're like, I'm not open to that. So that completely defeats the purpose of joining the mastermind. And I think you're saying because you and I have talked about this, uh, we've been involved in many of the same circles, like in online business. And again, I say this always with a lot of generosity, like I'm not trying to be in any way, throw any kind of shade at anybody. You know, I want all of these other businesses to thrive. But you, you simply can't deny the fact that a Catholic is going to come into business with obviously a set of moral standards and moral principles that's going to be different than somebody who does not like have any sense of objective truth or absolute, you know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just, that's just reality. Right. And I just grew really tired of sifting through, you know, what is like legit, what is not, what can I pay attention to in terms of like, conversations around energy and manifesting and all that kind of stuff that's in line with my Catholic faith and what is not like I I just grew tired of I I call it the mental gymnastics of that like I just found it very exhausting and so I, I do think having other perspectives is so important like so don't don't hear me incorrectly there either I do think that having other perspectives including very secular ones can be very helpful you know I I, I, I really believe that but I would say in the intimate day-to-day, -day, so meaning somebody that you are choosing to listen to and to walk with, to just be frank, there's an ease, I would say. Like there's going to just be an ease and a trust that comes when you know you're aligned, especially morally. Wouldn't you agree, Stephanie? I do agree that it does take a lot of the heaviness, like that layer, so that you can freely share in the group without feeling like you have to filter or edit so because as to not offend somebody or or start like a debate. Um, it's just this openness where you can just speak and it's it's like a sisterhood when you can, especially when you're with other Catholic moms. <laughs> yeah, and I and I think just real quick before we get into some of the again really practical stuff, there's like a I, I if I was to go into a secular group and say, well, okay, I'm just gonna trust the Lord with this. Like th there's there just there's gonna be some people who get that, and there's gonna be some people who don't. But there is a practical uh, and I talked about this in the podcast um, two podcasts ago, like how to trust God with your business, right? There's a, it looks different in my humble opinion. What it looks like for a Catholic to trust God with their business 
in actual practicality, like in the movement, in the daily activities, there's a different set of, you know, literally like, like actions that happen that I just think somebody without that like-mindedness is not going to understand. And again, it's like, you don't want to be defending the fact, well, I'm actually just going to go take some time and pray about it. Not that anybody has to defend it, but it's like, if you're being led by somebody who's always like, no, you just got to go. You just got to go. Like, you just got to like hustle and go. That's going to become a problem (laughs) unless you are incredibly like, uh, you know, am I making sense, Stephanie? Like, unless you're incredibly mentally Mm -hmm. sort of like blinders up, no, I'm just going to like trust my gut on this. Um, I just really like, from what I saw, I felt like there was something wrong with me for wanting to take more pauses. Do you know what I mean? Like, I felt like there was something wrong with me that I wasn't making decisions as quickly as maybe as some of them. And I'm not trying to say like a Catholic entrepreneur needs to be slow. Like, that's not at all what I'm saying. But my point is, is that it's just easier. (laughs) In my opinion, it's just easier when there's an amazing amount of alignment. All righty. Number one, the first thing that is a benefit of being in a mastermind, Stephanie, what is that? Accountability. Why? When you have accountability. accountability. When, yes, when you have accountability. So when you say that you're going to do something, you have a, you, you've said it, and now you feel inclined to do it. And when you're just when you just have yourself, it's so easy to make excuses or cause mind drama and just not do it because no one else knows. And this is actually like a like a very important strategy for most, pretty much every business owner I've met that has met their goals is they have accountability to someone. Yeah. The way that we do this in our mastermind is we have our members identify, we, we follow uh, loosely or we encourage our, our members to follow EOS, Entrepreneurial. I always forget what the acronym is on entrepreneurial operating systems. And part of EOS, the model of EOS is the identification of 90 day, they call them rocks. So 90 day rocks. What are you focusing on in your business this 90 days? And it has to be very specific, you know, very measurable, all those kinds of things. But what we do with those is once you've identified them, you now report in every time we meet, is this goal on track? Or is it off track? And what I have found that's been helpful, I mean, you and I do this in our in our business as well. Um, but what I find has been really helpful to the, the participants is that it forces them, quote unquote, I always use that in, it's an invitation, but you know what I mean. It, it encourages them the coaching that they receive from both you and I live on the mastermind calls to be very specific And not just like, I'm feeling terrible today, which is fine. We can coach you on that too. But when you are working towards something very specific and you can say, this is off track, what EOS teaches is that then you you need to discuss why it's off track, especially if something's off track for many weeks. And here's the thing in business. It's like, why would, how, why would we expect a business to succeed if it has not identified great goals? right? Why, why would we think a business would succeed? Like, if you don't have goals in your business right now, that's totally fine. Hear me loud and clear. But the identification of goals, specific rocks, like very measurable ones, is what allows you to not waste time, not spin your wheels, not spend all this time on Canva, for example, maybe not do the things that you particularly think are easy. When you do have, have those very limited blocks of time in the margins of your motherhood, you're like, oh, right, I'm going to be reporting in that this rock is on track or off track. So I best be making sure that there's some activity that's going to move that rock forward. So yeah, the accountability is huge. And again, for those of you who are listening, who maybe are like me and are like, yeah, like I just make all these lists and then they just disappear. <laughs> the, the Being in a group, again, it's like, uh, okay. I see the businesses that I see grow, what they have in common, many of them, is that they have teams. They've moved from solopreneur to entrepreneur. So there's more people than just them who are caring about making money in the business, right? When you are a mom running her business from her kitchen 
the little toddlers throwing Cheerios on the floor while you're on your computer, like you might just not be in that position where you can hire staff and you can start to grow because you're, you're only in the beginning of making profit, but having this collective of people who will hold you accountable, both, you know, and support you emotionally. And we're going to get into that, but that accountability is huge because otherwise then it's just a list on your computer, right? A, a list on your computer that can just disappear forever. Alrighty, Stephanie, what's the next thing that's really important after accountability? What's the next thing that is such an asset of being in a mastermind? A mindset support. You know, I love this topic. Why is this topic important to you? Yeah, one thing I recognized by working with uh, entrepreneurs that were doing pretty good in their business, the, the focus, the, the I realized that the the one thing that specifically helped them get to where they they went is their mindset. And I realized that is so key that it all comes down to mindset because you may know how to do something, but you may not take action on it because of your mindset. And so um, that was actually the reason why I joined the Wealth Without Guilt Mastermind is because I wanted support on my mindset to take action and um, it's just an, it's it's something universal that we all need support in. Yeah. You know, I used to really poo poo, so to speak, group coaching. Like I was like, no, why would I ever want to myself even be included in a group coaching model or or even for my clients? Like I really had this bias that one on one coaching was always better. And there's a lot of value in one on one coaching. Don't get me wrong. There's. Um, especially as I've been going through internal family systems and I'm going to be um, trained in IFS level one. So I will be able to practice this with my clients, but in, in a coaching capacity, but it is a, a therapy, a modality of therapy. What I've learned is that there's definitely a time and a place and a, a different kind of function that can happen, like really beautiful results in one-on-one. -on -one. But coaching, group coaching, the, the feedback I have received from my clients all the time is wow when you coached you know mary hope it was like i got coached myself because my problem was so similar or the feedback i get all the time is like you coached her and it made me think of something that i was couldn't put into words and now i have the words to articulate it and so here coach me on this because i didn't have the words before there is so much power in mindset even just like I'll have a bad day. I have bad days all the time. I'm living out of boxes currently. And the last few days has been a different roller coaster of like, I trust the Lord immensely. And like, where are you, Lord? I just want to get out of these boxes. So like, even myself, I look to my the own mastermind I lead and the communities that I continue to be involved in that are more peer support. Like I will intentionally go into those Slack channels where the communication is all housed, particularly when I'm in a bad mood and I have no desire to do anything in my business. And I'll just be like, okay, I need a reminder like that of, of just, this is normal. This is okay. Other people struggle with this and there can be so much comfort and consolation <laughs> in even just that, you know, like, and again, even, you know, I know I can reach out to Stephanie and be like, I'm having a horrible day. And she will be able to be like, okay, let's like remind you of the truth of who you are. She, like, and, and even with her different like training strategies, she's able to, or different certifications, she's able to help me pick me up and get my mindset in a much better place. And so there's that opportunity for incredible growth in mindset. Um, okay, so we accountability from group members, training in your mindset. What else is an incredible asset to being in a mastermind? Networking and collaborations. Ooh, and we have some pretty cool evidence of some of this, but tell us first, why can networking and collaboration be so helpful, a helpful result of a mastermind? Yeah, when you're in a mastermind where, you, where you're in alignment with your core values, the, that's where the network and collaborations can even be even more powerful. And so we have evidence in, in our mastermind that this is pretty powerful because 
we're we're all kind of in the same um we we enjoy speaking to the same people and so we're able to uh like support each other in social media and also through our different uh marketing campaigns because we really understand that group of people that we're serving this has been a really natural fruit. And I, I really do like to make this clear. It's not a prerequisite. In my opinion, I don't think it should be like a prerequisite or sort of like a um, unspoken rule that people share each other's things. Cause that to me is problematic too. Like I, I, I would never, I don't love the idea. You know, back in the day they were called um, Instagram pods. I think there, there was like, there were names for these before where people intentionally got together sometimes you bought into it. Like sometimes like a, an Instagram pod, you know, you would pay $50 or a hundred dollars and then everybody was throwing that in the pod and it was, you know, whatever. Uh, anyway, my point is, is like, um, I really like to make it clear that it's, 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 it, this is of people's own volition. Like I, I encourage it, but I don't think anybody should sign up for a mastermind and feel like there's an obligation attached. You want to do this from a place of sincerity. And that's what I love. Like truly, like I, when, when my mastermind members share the other mastermind members content and, and no one has asked them, nobody has sort of like said, like, please share this, you know, it just, it's just, it makes my heart sore because, oh gosh, like again, doing business alone can be very difficult. It can be very difficult to put something out there. And then nobody, <laughs> nobody like pays attention, but to just know that you've got other women who are paying attention, um, who are like cheering on your success and the fruits that come when things are shared, you know, the increased visibility, we're going to get into that, but just like, gosh, it's just so beautiful. And then of course, when people have alignment, so meaning like, you know, um, for example, one of my mastermind members uh, Claudine Noel. She, she's been on the podcast before. Um, uh, Virginia Brown, same thing. Like when there's just clearly something that is going to serve my audience that somebody has, it's like, I really want to just share it because I know it's going to help my audience. And there's just so many win-wins that happen when these collaborations incur, right? Like increase of your visibility, increase of sales, all those kinds of things can happen. And I just love, um, you know, masterminds that I've been in, I've, I've participated in some really amazing collaborations um, that have been very fruitful, both just from a visibility point of view, as well as a financial point of view. Anything else you want to add to that? Uh, no, I, I think we just led into the fourth one, which what? is increased visibility. Increased visibility. Now, everybody, I, you may have heard me talk about this. I recently took my M code assessment and it was so interesting to understand my motivations. My number one motivation is around being visible. Like it's so fascinating to me. And so this one to me is like a no brainer, but Stephanie, why is increased visibility? Why does that happen as a result of a mastermind? Why can that happen as a result of a mastermind? And why is it great for a business? Okay. Yes, increased visibility is definitely a uh, a very strong pillar of business. That's what we're we're achieve we're looking to achieve, and it's a, it's also a big reason to have a mastermind because there's more eyeballs on your business, and there's people that are that you become really close to that want to give you more visibility. As a very practical example, we have Lisa who gives increased visibility to the mastermind members when she just wants to show off their work. Like, like this is what Virginia Braun is doing. You know what I mean? She is helping people in their business to increase profit, for example. Um, that's just a very practical example. So she had her on the podcast. And so there's those opportunities that may not happen otherwise. You know, and, and visibility, like I, 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 we, I just facilitated a social media workshop where I created this graphic and it's like, there are three truly just like three basic principles to a business. You've got to have an audience, which means that you have to be visible to people. Like people have to know who you are. Then you've got to have a product that actually meets a need of your people. 
And then you have to be able to fulfill that. And if you're missing one of these things, that's fine. But just in my humble opinion, you're not really a business. So for example, um, if you have a big audience, but you actually don't sell anything, I would say you're more like an influencer and there's tons of advantages or tons of strategies that you can use um, that platform for. If you have an amazing business, but nobody to sell it to, well, same thing. It's like your customers have to come from somewhere. They don't all have to come online. You don't have to have an online audience to have a, a business, meaning you can have people just walk up to you off the street. I used the example on the social media workshop of going door to door, like in the eighties, it was really popular for Avon ladies, Mary Kay type ladies to come literally to your doorstep and be like, Hey, can I sell you some cosmetics? Like from my little pack here. Right. So you don't have to have an online audience, but oh my word. And this is something I will just scream from the rooftops. It's a very strategic, almost free way. And I say almost free because what do you need to grow an online audience? You need a cell phone and you need the internet. That's almost free. You know what I mean? Like that's how, but like other than that, you need some skill, which obviously you can learn from me, but like by golly, it's a really, really, really strategic move to increase your visibility online. And so being in a mastermind, again, I'm not a fan of like, you have to share things. I'm much more a fan of invitations to share things from members, but there's a lot that can be said a lot of growth can happen. And I see it. I will see it like firsthand when um, uh, just when various members share other members work, you definitely see that. Oh, wow. Thank you for that mention because, you know, I got 20 new followers. Right. And so it can be very, very helpful when it comes to visibility. Stephanie, I could talk to you all day about this topic, but I think we've got time for one more. What's like another really important benefit and why someone would really like benefit and enjoy being part of a mastermind. Okay. Um, well, I think the, I have uh, 10 points here, but another really important one is specifically with our mastermind is you get one-to-one -one support with two coaches. Let's talk about this and why this is like really fun. Okay. So because there is something very unique of having the perspective of two coaches. Um, and I'm curious because I have my strong opinions about this because I, I had only been in group experiences where there was like one leader and the one leader may have had like definitely a support staff, you know, those kinds of things, people who would chime in in the Facebook group. Right. But your main like coaching was coming from one person. Why is, particularly in our experience, like why can it be very, very helpful to have two perspectives? Yes, I believe that uh, Lisa and I have so much value um, for the mastermind members because we have different backgrounds and experiences. And so I noticed that um, they, ha they have the, the opportunity to come to any one of us for any of these things, for any support. But I noticed that uh, they definitely are inclined to go to Lisa for mindset support. And then they'll they'll come to me for uh, help with their launch and help with their uh, back end, uh, putting their business together, whether it's hiring or project management, some of the more tactical things uh, and strategic things. But Lisa also strategic, but very strongly grounded in, in mindset support. My my favorite thing about it too, and, and I've really been reflecting on this. I, I was just coaching a beautiful woman today. I, Stephanie, I don't know why I attract a lot of melancholics. I have a lot of melancholics. I don't do as much one-on-one -on -one coaching, to be frank. It's very, very limited, the amount of one-on-one -on -one coaching I do. Um, but my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients, a lot of them are melancholics. And it's interesting because I've really had to kind of learn, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, these are the temperaments. I am much more sanguine and choleric, which is like, I'm very outgoing. I love people. Everything is a party. The choleric side of me makes me a very like natural leader. 
I have just, again, a natural tendency to kind of see everything as a challenge to be overcome. And I'm going to push through and like conquer. Like that's just sort of, again, classic sanguine choleric. Whereas Stephanie, you are a little bit more melancholic and melancholics are so interesting. So melancholics love perfection. There's a, a lot, a desire for a lot more quiet introspection. Um, the other side of the temperaments is also phlegmatic. So like a lack of intensity. I am married to a melancholic phlegmatic. I laugh all the, all the time. I'm like, I attract melancholics. Yes. I'm married to one. Like, I don't, it's, it's, I don't know why melancholics sign up to coach with me. It's like interesting. Like why so many of them? And I was telling this particular woman, like opposites attract, I guess. Like there's a, maybe there's something interesting about a coach that's a bit more outgoing. I'm not really sure to be honest, but my point is there's a bias that can just naturally happen when your coach is like opposite. Right. And it's just, I don't know. It's like nobody's fault. You know what I mean? It's just like normal. The same way that if you're a more melancholic phlegmatic, you might have this bias of like, well, everybody should see the world like I do, which is we should all be a little bit more quiet. We should all be a little bit more, you know, love a lack of intensity, that kind of thing. Right. It's, so it's fascinating to me that my husband, Josh, and I are married because we are diametrically like we are so polar opposite. You don't always see it in Josh because he can be a very goofy kind of guy and very smiley and very whatever. But like when it comes to work, especially, we are so opposite. Anyway, but my point is, is that there's a lot of value and sensitivity, I'm going to call it, Stephanie, and I'm curious because I haven't really talked about this with you, but I think there's a lot of value and sensitivity when you've got a coach who can be really like, rah, 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 sis, boom, ba, everybody, let's go, right? And then you also have a coach who can just inherently be a little bit more like, I'm going to quietly think about this. I'm going to quietly um, take some time and ponder this and get back to you. And like, I've also been learning a lot about introverts just in general and the value that introverts bring to a team, but we live in a culture that will often celebrate the extrovert and where the extrovert, to be honest, just takes over because that's what the extroverts do. Right. So I just find the dynamic very interesting. Do you want to just like, is there anything you want to elaborate on there, Stephanie? Yeah, when, when it comes to, uh, just I'll add to what you said, that's very true what you mentioned, but uh, as a melancholic, I also find that um, seeing, being able to see the layers under the layers and see what's really going on, because there's that, like a deep understanding um, of, of like, like Lisa, you can, I can know something is going on and pretty spot on without you even telling me. Like, I, like even just when someone's just sitting, I can see like their emotions. I can see if they're distracted. Like I can read people so well. And I think that's a, a very strong attribute to probably a melancholic. That is so fascinating. You can like read all of our body language on our calls and just like tell us. <laughs> what's really going on. I also think like you're so interesting as a nurse too. Like I feel like that's also just part of your your training. Like you, nurses have to kind of pick up on maybe what a patient isn't saying, you know, like in order to really ensure they're getting really great care. So I do love that about you. There's a sensitivity about you that's quite um, beautiful. Stephanie, I know you need to excuse yourself. I'm going to hang out and keep talking about masterminds, but any final words about the value of a mastermind. Yeah, it's such a big thing is really that you're really not alone. And that's the that's a, a common phrase I hear is, is you feel like you're an, on an island, that you feel like you're doing business alone, uh, that nobody else gets it. And so really that feeling that you're not alone and having that the community of that sisterhood to to really cheer you on with your wins or when you're struggling and to to see in our community women come together and say i'm praying for you you know like that is just so powerful and um it's just a next level next level mastermind really 
I love running this mastermind with you. I love running business with you, doing life with you. You know, it's still very bizarre to me that we haven't met in person. We're going to meet in person at Wealth Without Guilt Live in Toronto, everybody. Stephanie Donnie, who will be taking the stage, she is going to be talking about something. We haven't actually, uh, a time of recording, we haven't fully nailed down, but it will be remarkable. It will probably very much be data driven. <laughs> Stephanie, I'm so grateful for you. Thank you so much for being here today. I love you so much. There are a lot of other things I could say, everybody, about being in a mastermind. And I want to just touch very quickly on a couple of them. And that is, there is, and this is what I noticed about Stephanie. We have a lot of similar training, but of course, not one person can have all the training, right? And so we have had this, this interesting, like you get exposed to in a mastermind, not just your the leader of the mastermind's experience and their book of business, so to speak, or whatever you want to call it, like their encyclopedia of business, but you also get everybody in the mastermind. Like for example, I just learned from um, what we had a, we had a call, a mastermind call on uh, physiology and energy kind of related, like your body, taking care of your body. How do you get more energy? And such fascinating resources the women in my community were bringing to the table, like talking about sleep, talking about um, the coffee uh, substitutes, you know, Tessa um, from um, uh, Blessed to Stress, she runs a program for homemaking. Sorry, that's not it. Stress to Blessed. Oopsies. <laughs> you, nobody wants to be blessed to stress other way around. She was talking about a coffee substitute that I had never heard of. Uh, Jessica Castillo, one of my mastermind members, uh, has incredible resources when it comes to sleep and nutrition. So you're, you're, you're leveraging the collective experience of the group. And this can lead to just so many things. Your personal growth your ability to um, support your clients in a different way because of the support. And again, I just really want to echo what Stephanie just said before um, she had to go. <sighs> Business can be lonely. Like that is just a reality. Business can be lonely, but it doesn't have to be. Like when you surround yourself with a group of like-minded, especially people, who will support you, who will cheer you up when you're feeling low, who will say like, wow, that was amazing. I loved what you made there. You know, Kathleen LeBlanc, one of my mastermind members, I think of uh, often just will bring really real challenges that she faces and we all benefit. The whole group benefits when somebody is vulnerable and brings up an issue. The whole group benefits. And it's just, I could go on and on. I could go on and on, truly. The professional, personal, um, and spiritual growth that can happen when you are linking arms with a like-minded group of women. So of course, if this is intriguing to you, in the show description for this episode, I have put the link to the wait list to the mastermind that Stephanie and I run. And here's the thing. I want you just to encourage you, even if you're just curious, put your email in that box. Even if you're just curious, gosh, like, is this even for me? Am I even like far ahead enough in my business? You know, is this something that I will really benefit? Will this pay off? I just want you, even if you're just curious, put your email in that box and join the wait list so that you can know when we are opening up spots again. And over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be having women from our mastermind on the podcast to share the, the, the amazing things they're doing in their businesses. But again, to share what happens, how you can move forward when you join a mastermind. I particularly just want to speak to the person who might have been at this for a while. Maybe you've bought all the courses. Maybe you've even bought some of my courses. And you're not making the kind of progress that you want. What it really comes down to when anybody comes to me with that challenge, when I go to a coach even for my business with that challenge, 
the feedback that I receive and the feedback that I give people who come to me with their problems is it's very likely one of two things that's going on. It's usually a combination of the two. <laughs> How is your mindset? And then just straight up skill set. Like really when you're when you're boiling it down and just sort of like simmering it down to, you know, basic level we're either not moving forward at the pace or the results that you want because of something to do with your thoughts, so your mindset, or we're maybe not identifying the right tasks, the right tactics, the right goals that will get you to where you want to go in your business. So that is your skill set. And I just, again, our combination of interesting strengths our combination of hard lessons learned in entrepreneurship. And particularly, I love Stephanie's background in online entrepreneurship and just how much she has learned being on the back end of other people's businesses. Like that's just so invaluable. That lens entirely is just worth so much money <laughs> because she she draws from... I draw from my experience. I draw from this experience of the clients that I've coached, right? But she has coached people or been in the back end of businesses in so many different genres, like secular, non, like just like all kinds of genres, very successful businesses. And so she just brings that lens to the table that I find so valuable for both myself and my mastermind members. All right, my friends. And of course, you can see her live in Toronto at Wealth Without Guilt Live, October 5 through 7. Tickets are available both online and in person. And you can join me at that conference by visiting the thepossibilitymomconference.com slash 2000. 23. That's the possibilitymomconference.com slash 2023. Next week on the podcast, I have a very, very special guest. My pregnant brain is forgetting who it is right now, but it is one of the members of my mastermind who I know you're going to love hearing from, and I'm going to... <coughs> clear my throat while I pull up exactly who it is. Next week on The Mastermind, I'm going to have on the beautiful Kathleen LeBlanc. Kathleen LeBlanc runs a ministry with her husband, Jesse, where they bring live music, incredible live music, to various communities currently right now in South um, Southern Ontario and beyond. So live music, but also this joy and levity to, hold on, <laughs> excuse me, a joy and a levity to dating your spouse. They run an online community called the Catholic Date Night, which is a subscription where you gain access to literal plug and play, so to speak, set it and forget it, date nights. You can just put in your calendar. You know you're going to have access to some pretty incredible reflection questions and activities to help you in your marriage. But my, my big thing that I love about them that I find so different and so unique is they, they are, they are funny. Like they, they just bring this joy and levity to everything they do. I don't know about you, but like, you know, you'll go to like a talk on marriage and, um, you know, I don't know, like the flavor is a little bit serious and that's fine. We need, we need all that. Sometimes you need a good, just like reflective type of thing, but I'm not going to lie. Like I, I love fun. <laughs> I love, I love me some levity. And at the end of a day, when I have been working and then touched by a bunch of small people and asked many cerebral questions by my bigger kids and just, again, dealing with all the things, sometimes I just want a little bit of lightness, a little bit of levity, a little bit of joy. 
and a little bit of investment in my marriage. And that is what Kathleen and Jesse bring inside of their Catholic date night experience. So she's going to be joining me live on the podcast next week. For those of you who are going back to school this week, I know many of you in the South have already been back for basically a month. For those of you who this is the last weekend of summer, I hope you have an amazing end of summer and I hope you have an amazing start to your school year. If it is super overwhelming, don't worry. I got you. You're going to be fine. One minute at a time. All right, my friends, we will see you next week.